So the ALCS, I watched every single moment of, and it was, it was crazy. These were some of the best games that I've seen in a long time. Part of that is Homerism because I am deeply invested as a Yankees fan and every right. momentum shift, every to and fro, all of the uh oh moments felt bigger for me. Um, just like they would if it was your team, right? You would feel th- it would yeah. be a greater yeah. level of resonance. However, I still think that the way these games transpired, hoity toity language there, the way these games went with all the lead changes, it was tooth and nail. It was a grudge match. And I loved it. I thought it was amazing. So I will say this, that game one, I don't feel like had the tension or the action associated with the others, just because it was the Yankees got out to a four nothing lead by the fourth inning, right? That's true. And by that yeah. time, it's kind of like, okay, it doesn't feel like Cleveland has what it takes to come back from this. Game two was better, mm-hmm. right? A whole lot better. A whole lot. Um, and that was a 6-3 game, but still like... That was a 3-2 game after the fifth inning. And so that's, yeah. that's way more exciting. And then the Yankees pulled yeah. away, and the ending the ending wasn't as good. But where the games got really, really great, absolutely mm-hmm. great, was in Cleveland. Like iconic. Those were iconic some of the great. most exciting postseason games we have seen in a long time. We didn't get near that level of excitement from the NLCS because it was no. so high scoring. And not just high scoring, but blowouts. The closest yeah. score differential was, I think, four runs. But these ones, it was extra innings twice in Cleveland. Twice. Twice. Like, I told you, I think it was on Saturday. I was like, I've been waiting for the eighth inning all day. Yeah, you did. All day long. Yeah. I don't care about yeah. innings one through seven tonight. Yeah. I want to get to the eighth <laughs> inning and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And because it, and that's when it you gets were real rewarded. and that's when it goes down. Yeah. You were rewarded. That was, <laughs> it was, I sat there. <laughs> I was like, okay, I, the whole family knows the rules, right? We've all got our etiquette cards, and we're checking off. <laughs> we're like, don't move, you know, as as of this way. Okay, you have to change positions. I, and I'm policing everybody the whole time. I'm like, don't move, don't move, don't move. Stop. You must be a real joy to watch the game with, Brick. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I have people who are learning baseball, so I'm not a tyrant. And I also wouldn't have to explain these things if I was watching. Next year, they'll get it. It won't be a thing to worry about. Olivia said to me, one of my kids said to me, hey, let me get it for you so you don't have to move. I was like, yeah, you get this. It was amazing. Yes, it was so good. She even at one point, she said to me, did did that happen because I moved? I'm like, no, honey, of course not. (laughs) The correct answer to that question, though, was yes. You just don't want yeah. to feel bad. I didn't admit it to her. I don't know. What am I going to do, right? She's going to carry that for the rest of her life. Could you imagine? She moves, and then there's a whole there's a whole rally. The Yankees lose, 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 and get eliminated. She's like, it's because I put my shoes my on. Fault. That's my what, fault. That's what happened. That's right. I took, my, my, or took shoes my shoes off. I wanted to get comfortable. I twisted take my, my hat around off. backward, and now it's over. <laughs> Fidgeted as an eight-year-old, and the Yankees lost <laughs> and got eliminated. <laughs> my dad, he'll be mad at me for the rest of my life. <laughs> no, no, S- firmly, my tongue is firmly in my cheek right now. <laughs> but but we had such a great time watching the games, and uh, you know, there's some real budding baseball fans at my house. And it's just awesome. It's That's just cool. Awesome. That's a lot of fun. So and and Marina was just she was like, now hold on wait a minute, wait a minute. They can't do that. So she's really getting into it. She even said to me ahead of uh, game four, she's like, I don't know. This is, this one's tight. But then game five, she revealed after that she had no tension. She felt really good about it. She was at work all day and, and was thinking, nah, it's fine. It's no big deal. Me (laughs) don't feel that way. Never, ever. <laughs> you don't feel that way when your team is in the playoffs. You never feel good about it because all you know about, all you think about are the things that can go wrong. Yeah, that's right. Because that's how it feels. Because that's the thing that's crazy about the playoffs is that it's it's an extra gear for everybody. And yeah. everything is amplified. The good is amplified. The bad is amplified. And the bad is what you remember because the bad that blows the game 
that's the one you remember. That is, that is what you remember yep. forever. There is still a play from the 1995 ALCS that I remember where there was a pass ball. One run came around. They thought that the play was over, didn't get the ball back to the pitcher. And so somebody came around, scored from second on a pass ball. It's like, hmm. I didn't even watch it live. I watched it recorded <laughs> later on a VHS tape. <laughs> and I remember and that back play then- to this day. And back then you could because nobody was going to blow it for you. <laughs> there was yeah, no such exactly. thing as a social media spoiler. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. So game yep. three in Cleveland, Cleveland pulled ahead and won the game seven to five. That was in the 10th inning and it was a walk off and it was just glorious for Cleveland fans. And it was eight a- of the 12 runs, eight of the 12 runs were scored eighth inning and on. Yep. The Yankees yep. got three in the top of the eighth, one in the top of the ninth. Cleveland scored two to tie it up in the bottom of the ninth, and then that big old fatty walk-off home run by David Fry in the 10th inning. And I got to say, some of the stuff on social media that they showed where uh, there was somebody a few buildings over from Progressive Field with their camera oh. trained on the field, and yeah. you could hear the reaction. I'm sure they had a special microphone. They probably had a, some kind of mic on their camera okay. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But... You could hear the crowd roar was bonkers. It was like so that cool. Would be so crazy. Like I'm obviously a Yankees fan, but I watched that and thought, mm-hmm. Yep, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Like mm-hmm. It just is how it's supposed to be. And it was thrilling. Yep. It even even though we lost, I have to admit it was thrilling. And it was for the sake of baseball, it was spectacular. Mm-hmm. You just Did you hear the it. call in the bottom of the ninth from uh, what's that dude's name? Uh, golly, Jokenzi, Jokenzi Noel. Did you hear what the call oh, was when he Christmas? hit that game tying? No, yeah, that big time, that t- game tying home run. It was Feliz Navidad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's where that's where all the Feliz Navidad signs came from. The next night yeah. for Game Four. Which, by the way, also a thriller. Man. John Carlos tying... Stanton is a whole new person in October. I don't... Dude, who is this guy? Because Judge has hit two home runs the entire series. No, I'm sorry. The entire postseason. Postseason, yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. I made that mistake. <laughs> Both against Cleveland. One on Tuesday... And one on Thursday, so one in New York and one in Cleveland. But um, whew, that dude's got to step up literally to the plate against the Dodgers. We need his offensive He's gonna performances. To. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we'll talk more about that in a little we bit. Will. But, so in the bottom of the eighth inning, David Fry again. So David Fry walks it off the night before, and then David Fry comes up and it's a little – I think it was, did he? I think I don't think it was a bunt. I think it was just a swinging bunt. A yeah, it was a dribbler. And, Mm-hmm. And Leiter ends up. Uh, oh, that's what I remember the play now. That was the one where he tossed it right through uh, Anthony Rizzo's wickets. Oh, geez. Ball went into right field, and David Fry ends up going to second. Yep. Uh, Bone Naylor scores to tie the game. But then they walk Jose Ramirez. Smart mm-hmm. move. You don't want him up with the uh, no go ahead run on second base. And then Josh Naylor strikes out, just like yep. you thought he would. Right. Yeah, I called it. So Stanton has hit a home run in th- the last three games. He did it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all in Cleveland. He's responsible in that run of six for six RBIs. He was responsible for six RBIs. And in his four, here's the thing that kills me. In his uh, four plate appearances yesterday or Saturday, it was three strikeouts. <laughs> His four plate appearances on Friday, two strikeouts. He didn't strike out at all on Thursday or Tuesday, actually. That's pretty dang good for Stan. Yeah. To, like, home runs aside, for him to not strike out at all in a game is pretty good, yeah. especially given – because he, he's one of the, the big three outcome guys, right? And walking yeah. really isn't even that common with him. It's mostly a two outcome mm. with him strikeout exactly. or – or home run, but for him to home run. only, or I guess not strike <laughs> out at all in a game. Yeah. Pretty good. It's amazing. 
Yep, it's absolutely. So is amazing. he the first Yankee ever to hit five home runs in a postseason? No, Reggie mm, Jackson no. did it in I was seventy-seven. Say Reggie Barr, Reggie Barr in seventy-seven. Reggie Reggie Oxford game. did it in seventy-seven. He hit four total in seventy-eight. Right, but if he hits one more, though, he'll be the first Yankee to hit six. It's amazing. Uh, Soto is averaging this postseason. 333. <laughs> it's pretty By absurd. I mean, you get to Otani's uh, with runners on base numbers. Yeah. That's bonkers. But that gets, still, that's 333 video is pretty game numbers. good. 333 is good. He's got an 1106 <laughs> OPS this postseason. And that home run, and then making the final put out in game five. Just, it was the iconic Yankee moment we all wanted. It was the iconic Yankee moment we all needed. And it upped his free agency price tag by about a hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it went from six hundred million to seven hundred million. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it feels. I was only like kind of being hyperbolic when I said that's why you pay this man one billion dollars this winter. Yeah, I'm telling you, because there's he's something gonna... about having Juan Soto on your team that takes everybody else to another level. He's if you were to hit him behind Judge, Judge would get all the protection in the world. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, you put can't any do team that. you put him Don't on. Do that. If you put him in the right spot in the lineup, he's going to make everybody in front of him better. Yep, I agree. And anybody who gets on base, he's going to drive in all the time because that's what he does. He was responsible for five, count them six, of the RBIs against Cleveland in the ALCS. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. So that can is, we talk about game awesome. five real quick? We simply must. that was another outstanding finish. Extra yeah. innings again. Yeah. And this was, this was when I texted you, Brick, was Juan Soto hit yeah. that three-run home run in the top of the 10th inning. Yep. And I was like, you have to give him all the money. Mm-hmm. And like you Jeff do. Passan said on Seattle Sports Radio, everybody can afford him. Everybody, right. Now, here's the difference maker for me, right? In game five, Cleveland left eight men on base. They were one for six with runners in scoring position total. The Yankees left four on base and were two for six with runners in scoring position. I'm going to keep beating this drum. If the Yankees can capitalize and on runners on the bases... If they can drive those runs in, they're going to be fine. If they leave more guys on base than the opposition, it's going to be a big problem. So I'm going to go look at game three. That's the thing that's tough is that they're getting all the traffic, but for some reason they can't seem to drive in. I mean, they obviously they drove in a bunch because this is one thing we're going to get to later is they hit a bunch of home runs. Yep. Right. But you yep. can't live and die by the home run in the World Series. It worked in Cleveland because you've got the Cleveland jet stream. Um, can't do it. Though. But Cleveland also took advantage of that a couple times. So uh, right. But I think so the jet tough. stream's a little bit, a little bit uh, nullified by the cold, and by the all those balls hit out to right. I feel like at left field, that's where the jet stream really comes in. The jet stream goes out to right. Because they oh, t- that's where they took the seats out. Right. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was left field for some reason. But you're right. No, I think well, left field helped. was a shorter porch. But yeah, right field is where <laughs> the jet helped. stream goes. Because <laughs> yeah. I think if we were to look at a spray chart, I think we would probably see most of them were uh, right from center to right field. Mm-hmm. If I'm thinking yeah. back. But that one that Judge hit out uh, in, what was that, game three? Game four? Yeah, three or four. Game three. That one that he hit out in game three, that screamer. That didn't yeah. even get up into the jet stream. That ball probably didn't get more than 25 feet off the ground ever. <laughs> it, it, it really felt it was a line drive <laughs> that uh, just kept going. I but feel did, bad for so, the, poor, the poor sucker who was on the opposite end of that thing because that's going to do some damage, man. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sick of looking at the past. Let's look ahead to the future. Hold How on, I have, one, I have one fun fact Okay. from game five. Okay. Okay. Game five, bottom of the second inning. Bo Naylor hits a line drive to right field, scores Josh Naylor from first, by the way. Ha- from right. First. 
How? That he is sneaky fast. I feel like he is. He <laughs> moves a lot better than he looks like he would. That dude, can especially get the bases. when his helmet flies off, then you know it's going to be okay. <laughs> also, the zero dynamics. But so this is here's a fun thing, Brig. Bone Naylor is the first player ever to drive in his older brother in the ALCS while playing on a grass surface with a waning gibbous moon. <laughs> Straight facts. You, yes. That's amazing. You did call the waning gibbous, though. You did. I absolutely I called the waning it. gibbous. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all happy about it. <laughs> We are. You know, it's, it's funny. I take the trash out every night, and for some reason, I always look up the moon and like, oh, yes. I don't know why I do that. Do you really? I do. Yep. That's awesome. You would. Astronomy you nerd. Science anyway. background. Yeah. <laughs> Must be. 